Hello, Baptist. How we doing? Good. Okay, a few announcements. Uh, Tuesday, 7 p.m., Five Love Languages class. Uh, music practice this week only is going to be on Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, Sunday, November 3rd, 9.15, prayer time. Uh, Thursday, November 7th, is going to be Kids Club. Sunday, November 10th at 5 p.m., Aspire Women's Event. Have a question for you, or maybe a, if you guys have a suggestion. We're looking for a family to support for Christmas. So if you know of somebody that may be deserving or needing a little help this Christmas time, if you would maybe talk to Joe and, and give her some ideas, but we'd like to have, help out somebody in the community that needs it for Christmas. Um, a special thank you from Caden and Taylor. Had their baby shower yesterday and glad everybody that could make it made it down here. And special thanks to Kimber who really jumped in and made things go well. Appreciate that. A uh, special thank you to the roofing crew who helped complete the roof yesterday. Good job, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, we feel Lady One shoe boxes for Operation Christmas Child. Let's see, prayer request, our country, our leaders, godly voting, Donna, Carl, Riley, JD, Patty, Vicki Childers, people in the hurricane area, their families, uh, Brenda's sister-in-law, she's doing much better now too, by the way, uh, Josh, Anthony, Ellen, First Baptist Church, Scott, Oreo, Joe, O-R-L-O. -O. Who's Orlo? Sandy's daughter's father-in-law. Okay, got it. Christina and Jackie. Do we have any other prayer requests that we need to keep in mind? So the young life leaders. Anything else? All righty. Uh, ministry opportunities, as always, the shoebox ministry. Uh, trying to raise $10 per box to get them mailed out, if you can help. Uh, Boise Rescue Mission. Again, the Fall Kids Club. Women's Devotions, Women's Retreat. Do we have any anniversaries coming up this week? Riley and Tiffany. What, 10 years? 11 years. <laughs> so for your 11th anniversary, you went to the ER. I don't want to know any more than that. That's okay. Uh, any birthdays coming up this week? Any birthdays? No birthdays either, huh? Okay, well, we'll just go right ahead and go into prayer time then. Dear Heavenly Father, you are such an awesome God. We thank you for all that you do in our behalves, how you guide and direct us and, and show us your will for our, our lives, dear Lord. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, and that he was willing to go to the cross and sacrifice his life on the cross for us. We have so much to be thankful for. We just ask that you be with these prayer requests that we brought forward this morning. We know you are the great physician. We know that you're in control. We know that you can take care of whatever it is that's troubling us. We know you love your children and that you are always there that we can call upon. We just ask that you be with Pastor as he brings the morning message. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Kids. Okay, kids, you're not dismissed. Go sit down, Jacob. I know. Pastor and Miss Joe. As in usual Sand Hollow time, you wait till the last minute. But we want to thank you for being the leaders that you are and just doing all that you do for us. Happy Pastor Appreciation Month. 
Well, we kind of tolerate you guys, too. <laughs> okay, now, kids, begone. For last week, I guess I got a little long winded. And uh, it was a short one. Well, thank you. I didn't realize that when Bobby Costa tells me, man, you know what, that, you, you preached a long time. <laughs> then, you know, so yeah, I probably preached a long time. I just, you know, sometimes I just have things that I need to say. And I was sharing with them yesterday when we were up on the roof that uh, I don't even know how blessed this is all going to be because I really believe the Lord has wanted me to preach something that I've been kind of not wanting to preach. And so we're going to continue disobeying the Lord today and go through and go through Colossians. And we're going to stick in Colossians. But I think it's very pertinent today. Um, I think it's very pertinent. It's... Uh, we're going we're gonna, to, okay, we're Colossians chapter 1. If you have a Bible, you can open to that. We're going we're gonna to look at verses 9 through 14 today. And just to kind of give us a little review, I won't be, I won't preach the whole message again, Henry. We'll just review. Um, you know, last week we were talking about the church in Colossae. And um, Sarah, what was that, what was that fellow's name who, who started that? Epaphras? Yes. He kind of started this, this church, and when Paul was in prison, he's hearing good things happen, happening about this church in Colossae. And uh, it, what, what makes that such a big deal is they were, like every church that seemed to be, uh, that seemed to be started in, in those early years of the church, and I don't think it's even much different than today. There's, I, I was thinking that uh, when Joellen and I first come out here and things started happening, it was amazing on the people who came and wanted to help us keep things going. You know, help, that, oh, well, I just figured you might need a hand, and they all wanted to bring back some of the stuff that we were kind of like, no, no, that worked really good in the 50s, but this is the 2000s, we're doing something different. And so I think they meant well, just like I believe these other people meant well, but it, it just didn't work. And I, and I think that's really what the Colossi Church was battling too, is, you know, the people were coming in and wanted to say, the Jewish people for sure, coming in and saying, you know what, I, okay, I can get behind Jesus, but what about this? Okay, so what they were basically trying to say in a nutshell is Jesus and... And ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but any time that I said Jesus and, I found myself in trouble. Okay, there's only one way. There's only one, there's only one, there's only one way. And Jesus said it himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody gets to the Father except through me. You know, and that should kind of scare some of us, but Jesus also said that, you know, his burden is light. You know, we've been freed, people. If that doesn't get us excited 
I think it just shows the song that you sang this morning, Lord, I Need You. If we can't get excited by the freedom that we got, everybody in this room needs to be singing that song, Lord, I Need You, until we understand exactly what we've been freed from. And sometimes I think that happens to me as I forget. I forget where, where I've been sometimes. I forget what I've been saved from and, and more importantly, what I've been saved to. Okay, I've been saved from darkness into light. I've been, I've been set free from the, from the, uh, I've been set free from the wages of sin that I can't seem to stop doing. The Lord says, I set you free. Okay, that's, I don't know about you, but that gets me giddy. I mean, I said, spent some time in jail and I begged them to let me go, but you know, they didn't let me go until I spent that last day. One time I was in jail and I threw some hot coffee on a garden. They made me stay five more days. But Jesus says, Dallas, I've set you free. And if he's going to set somebody like me free, he set you free. So anyways, sure, Paul, speaking of jail, that's where he's writing this letter from. He's in jail in Rome. And uh, like we said last week, I believe that he's writing, he wrote, he wrote a few letters that we read today while he was in jail. And um, this was one of them. And anyways, he was telling the people last week, man, we hear about the good things that are going on in your church. Man, we're hearing about it. And so he continues today in verse 9, if you follow along with me. For this reason also, since the day we heard this, we haven't stopped praying for you. We are asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now one of the things that I want us to look at in this, I think that we could spend a month from Sundays on this verse, but what hopped out on me is um, the, the perseverance, the persistence, the continued praying. You know, sometimes we have people say, well, I, you know, you can't be praying for the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Well, I, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Um, you know, right here, Paul is saying we haven't stopped praying. He's, he's, he's persistent. He's keep going on. You know, he's, uh, you know, I think it's an awesome thing that we can serve a God who says, bring it on. Keep praying. Sarah, we have, we have not stopped praying for our children forever. And that's okay. Our grandparents, other people that we know, um, our parents, some of us, we haven't stopped praying. You know, Jesus told his disciples in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, and it was a parable that showed them that they should always pray and never, ever, ever give up. Never give up. You know, there was a, uh, there was a fellow named George Mueller. I'm sure some of you have heard of him. But he was a, uh, in the Victorian era, in the, in the mid-1800s, he, uh, he was a social reformer. Anyways, he wrote in his diary, and this guy named Dave Lang published his diary a bunch of years later. But George Mueller he said, in, 19, or in 1844, I began to pray for the conversion of five individuals. I prayed every day without a single intermission, whether sick or in health, on land or in the sea, or whatever the pressures of my engagements might be. Kind of rhymed there, he was kind of a poet. Um, Eighteen months elapsed before the first of the five was converted. I thanked God and prayed on the others. Five years elapsed and the second was converted. I thanked God for the second and prayed on for the other three. Day by day, I, c I continued to pray for them. And six years passed before the third was converted. I thanked God for the, th for the three and went on praying for the other two. These two remained unconverted. And 36 years later, he wrote that the other two, sons of the Mueller's friends, were still not converted. He wrote, but I hope in God I pray on, and I look for the answer. They are not converted yet, but they will be. In 1897, 52 years after he began to pray, these two men were finally converted um, and listen to this, after he died, after he died, they got converted. Mueller understood what Jesus meant when he told his disciples that they should always pray and not give up. He 
keep on praying, church. Be, be persistent in our prayers. Whatever we do, don't give up. You know, and, and I'm going to say that I think that this is one of the, this is one of the weapons that the Lord has given us to fight our adversary that seems to get kind of dusty at times, don't it? It seems to get kind of dusty, and we go, oh, well, I'm going to pray at home. But sometimes it's just easy to say, no, I'm praying at home. And, and are, do we really? You know, when I know for me, when I, I mean, I get, get up in the morning and I pray and do some things, but, but you know what? Most of the time when I do most of my serious praying is when I can't sleep, because I usually fall asleep when I start doing that. Okay? But do I spend my time? We went to the, to the war room. Remember the movie The War Room? Where that little lady, she had a, a closet that was her prayer room. That's where she spent many, many, many years praying for individuals. Praying for her sons. Praying for her, just, just praying. And at the end of the show, if somebody came to buy the house that she was selling, and, she, and the guy says, you know what? Something about this room, this was what the new tenant said, there's something about that room. You know, I think that's what happens, church, when we, when we take heart and we start praying. You know, we had, for 20 years almost, man, you know, we've, we've encouraged people to come and pray. Sandy started a prayer thing on Sunday morning. You know, for the first year, I just, well, that's the ladies' club. Well, then I started doing the ladies' club on Tuesdays. And I thought, well, you know what? I better join the ladies, because those ladies' people on Tuesday, listen, they are, they're unruly. They really are. So I better go and just see what's exactly going on there. And uh, you know what? Sandy's got a verse, and we start praying. And we pray for all kinds of things. Now, I wish I, wish I could say that we spend the whole hour praying, but we don't, you know, but we spend a good part of that hour praying. And what we would really encourage is for you guys, to somebody to come join us. It's been the, since I've been going there, there's been four of us. And every week we're praying that more people would come and join us. You know, there's power in corporate prayer. There is not one thing in history, not one, one revival, not anything in history that hasn't started with a small group of people getting on their hands and knees and praying. If we want our children to be saved, well, we need to come together and start praying and keep praying. If we want our grandbabies saved, we need to come together and pray. One of the things I've noticed about the topic of prayer is in, is in, is in 2020, 2019, or maybe no, it was in 2016, Franklin Graham went to every major city in the Union. And he put a prayer together because he didn't want Hillary Clinton to be the president. Okay? And you know what? Our, our world, our country, had unified around this. Um, I was amazed on how many Christians there were when we went to that, to that deal in Boise. And you know, and in, and in 2020, that didn't happen. We got complacent. And look what happened. And I'm telling you today, we, we ought to not be too, uh, too surprised on what's going to happen. Because I'm not saying that it's not happening. But nobody's invited me. Nobody's invited our church to come and let's pray for this next presidency. Again, I want to be careful. And I'm not going to say that it's not happening. But it's not happening on the scale that it was before. I'm t my, my whole point with that is, is that prayer works, folks. God hears us. God hears us. And, and, it, and it, even if it sometimes it's like, well, I don't, I don't want to go. Well, not, neither do I. I don't want to go. But it works. I don't want to be a part of it. It takes up time. I know. But it works. It, you know, there's many of us in this room today that somebody did exactly what Paul had done here. He's praying for the people in Colossae. He's praying that, that, they would get, that they would get saved. And he's doing it persistently. He's, he's praying that, 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 the, that the, the enemy would not be able to overtake the church. And he's doing it constantly. He's having Timothy and other people join him in these prayers. Corporate prayer works. If we work it. That's an old Amway thing. It works if you work it. I don't think any Amway salesman's ever 
come and draw the circles for you, but that's what they would tell me. Oh, yeah, the plan works if you work the plan. Prayer works, man. When we can get behind it and say, okay, I don't get an extra hour of sleep on Sunday. It'd be great. You know, the Costas and myself and Chris, we were up on this roof. We put 33 bundles of shingles up yesterday, and I'm telling you, it would have been nice to get an extra hour of sleep today. I mean, I had to spend 45 minutes in the shower just so my shoulders and back would work right. Right? But I think prayer is so important. Praying for you guys. Praying for the First Baptist Church. Praying for Israel. Praying for our country. It's so important that we do that. Let's move on. I promised you it would be late, so that's my soapbox for today. Oh, I promised you we'd get through it quickly. Verse 10. He says, So that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God. You know what Paul wanted the Colossae church to do is to grow in his knowledge. Why? So he could be pleasing to God. So they could be pleasing to God. I know when we're sitting in that room, what we want is we want the, our, our fellow um, our fellow men or countrymen and we want our fellow Christ followers to come together so you can be pleasing to God. I mean what an awesome thing to please God with our lives to see to see others to do that. Um, Paul Paul's prayer was that the Colossians behavior would please God in every way. My prayer for you is that your behavior will please God in every way. Um, they, th that, they should, that should be our goal. So uh, how, do you, how are you doing in that today? How are you doing in pleasing God today? Here's some, here's some things that come to my mind. Are you pleasing God in every way? In your marriage, parenting, honoring your parents? But there's a big way to please God right there. But what about in your thought life, your social life? In the things that you let your eyes see, movies you watch, websites you visit. Bobby and I talked about a, 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 a certain program that we both liked that I know that that probably didn't please God that I sat there binge watching this stupid show. Okay, so listen, I'm preaching to me too. Is, are we pleasing God? In your, sexual, in your sexual purity, in the way you spend your money and your time. Uh, in, your, in your conversation, gossip, profanity, in your commitment to the church you are serving, are you, are you tithing? Are you supporting your pastor and his staff? Um, in your witnessing, discipleship, listen, if we're failing in here, which I've had to do, it's okay. All right? It's not an unpardonable sin. What we can do is confess these areas in our life where we're not pleasing God. That's the beautiful thing about our Savior. He says, bring it to me, and I'll forget it. I'll forgive you. And, and you know, he's like the, the mom who knows that their unruly son will do better next time. And so let's do better next time. Let's be better. Let's be more, more accountable. Let's be more, let's hold each other accountable so we can please God. Our, we want our children and our grandchildren and our country. Listen, it can happen when the church starts pleasing God. Sometimes, I talked about last week, it's so hard to tell the difference between the outside and the inside. And, and the difference is, is when the church has decided we're going to do the things that please God. We're going to be the men and women who do what God has asked us to do. Um, he shows up every time. He shows up every time. I remember we had a men's class years ago. Henry was a part of it. Bobby was a part of it. We had a few other people. I'm looking around. I don't think anybody else was a part of it. And it was about our marriages. And it's this, this book that we were reading. They were, they were, they were teaching us or in, encouraging us to pray for our marriages. And we started praying for our marriages. And you know what? Marriages in the church started changing. And you know, I'm going to be honest with you, as soon as we stopped doing that, the marriages went right back to the way they were before we stopped, before we stopped. Or before we started, I mean. Prayer works, people. And when we, when God's people get that through their heads and commit to doing that, again, God shows up. Things changes. Verse 11, he's encouraging the church to be strengthened with all power. 
according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. Okay, what I want you to see in this one here is, is it's called great endurance. We have power, people. If you are here today and you've asked Jesus Christ to come and be the Lord of your, heart, of your life, you have power. You have been, you you are you are um, you have something that before Jesus died and rose again that the world never had, and that is the the Counselor, the Holy Spirit. He comes and lives inside of us, and that is power. That Amen is right. We are not left alone. We are not left defenseless here, people. Um, yeah, I think it's a great thing to experience God's power in our lives. And His power is available to every Christ follower. Stop selling yourself short. Understand and realize that at the, at the exact moment that you gave your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit came in and took up residence in your heart, giving you all the power that you need to live a life for Christ. And back to my previous point. How you can please God in every way. Listen to me. Not in your power. Sometimes we get this confused, people. It's not in our power. But, but in the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in you. That's how we do this. That's how this is accomplished. Be strengthened with all power. You know what? In some, some translations in the, in the Greek and the Hebrew, they talk about um, being enabled or being... With the dunamis, the supernatural power, like dynamite. Okay, it is awesome. Way more awesome than I think. We're talking about denominationalism today. And sometimes I get down on these tongue speakers, these people who, who wish I'd get full with the Spirit because I don't jump up and down and laugh and dance and roll around, whatever, man. But you know what? Some days I wish I could. Some days I wish that's how I was because that's the power that I got when I utilize it. There is not one thing that through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can't overcome. Amen. He has not left us alone. And Paul wants the church in Colossae to understand that. They're not alone. I want San Hollow Baptist Church and the people that are hearing my voice today to know that if you belong to Jesus Christ, you're not alone. That kind of power impacts you and all those around you. The power that comes from His glorious might, and not in, from any might or power that you may think you have. His glorious might is inexhaustible. There's no end to it. You and I get worn out from all our striving, but the Spirit's power never runs out. His glorious might is unseen, is unending. It is, it is eternal because He is eternal. His his might is intentional. He gave it to you so that you could use it to serve Him for your whole life. He gave it to you so you could have great endurance and patience. That's pretty heavy stuff. Let's go to verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the saints' inheritance and the light. What I've kind of gathered out of this one is, you know what? The Lord is, is, he is allowing us to participate in something that's bigger than us. He's allowing us to participate. I think it's a great thing to, that, that to participate in all that we've been given because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. I love the way Paul's words um, words this, we have been qualified, some, some say enabled, but we've been qualified, enabled. God has qualified, enabled us to share in his, in the inheritance of the saints. Okay, and, and my grandma passed away and it kind of got me to thinking, many times after someone passes away, family members gather to receive their portion of the inheritance. That's how, how it's sort of done. And those portions are normally spelled out in the deceased's person on the deceased person's will. Sometimes it's a painful process as family members begin to, to argue and fight over what they think that that they um, will receive or what they think they deserve from the estate. There's there's no arguing. Listen to me. 
This inheritance that God has offered, there's no arguing, okay? There's no fighting over our spiritual inheritance. Listen, because there's no question about what we will receive. Isn't that awesome? We should have, we, we should be, you know, the spirit-filled people be jumping up and down right now. They'd be excited about this. Because that's a big deal. There's not going to be arguing. You're going to know when we get to heaven that the, that the house the Lord says, Ooh, this one here I made for you. We're going to, ooh, man, that is the best house. Even if it's in the barn, I'm going to be, thank you, Jesus, I got a barn. Okay? Man, I got excited and lost my place. Listen, we've been enabled. We've been qualified. Um, we've been made adequate. We've been made, um, com we've been made acceptable only by the grace of God. He has qualified us. He has accepted us. He has included us in his inheritance. How awesome is that? 13, moving right along. He has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transformed us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. And 14 says, In Him we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So I think what we have here, because of, of uh, our relationship with the Lord, because of what the Holy Spirit has given us, is we're protected people. We have protection. Um, again, I think this is a super great thing, to be protected from eternal destruction through Christ Jesus and Christ alone. For those of us who are Christ followers, listen to me. If you're here today and have asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you've been rescued. You've been redeemed. You've been released. And, and because of that, we can rejoice. We can rejoice. We've been set free. Where are our spirit-filled people? Thank you. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to conclude. Told you, we're right on time. I practiced this. Who can you begin praying for over today? As I conclude, I would be asking you that question. Who is it that you can pray for? Who's your Colossi? Who are you hearing about? You know? Who is it in your life right now that needs to be filled with the knowledge of God? And God's will. Who needs that? Who needs to live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way? Who, who, needs, who needs us interceding for Him to, uh, to help them bear fruit and growing in the knowledge of the Lord? Who is it in your life that needs to be strengthened with all power and have great endurance and patience? Who are they? Who is it that needs to be rescued from the dominion of darkness and brought into the kingdom of Jesus? I'm telling you right now, everybody sitting here hearing my voice knows somebody. You might look to the left, you might look to the right. When you get up to shake the person's hand behind you, who knows? Who knows? Do you need that prayer for your life? Do you need people praying for you so we can continue to fight the good fight? Do we sometimes need people to fill the gap? We do. I mean, we do. If uh, Franklin Graham needed people praying for him, listen, we're just, uh, we're just us, man. Franklin Graham, you know, he probably had a, well, next to Joe Allen, had a, had a, you know, a line directly to the Lord. But Franklin Graham relied on people just like me and you to pray for him. To pray for him. People of the world needs us to be praying for them. Our church needs that. Our youth need that. You're getting ready to have a whole bunch of wrestlers. And I know that they need prayer. You need prayer. That you, that you lead them right. That you can teach them right. They health, for health. They need to be stay healthy. What a bummer is when your best wrestler breaks his arm. You know? We all need prayer. And, and Paul... He, uh, he was pretty, pretty clear here as far as I can read in verses 9 through 14 that we need to be persistent 
We need to be living and pleasing God. And we need to understand the power that we have. And that we need to know that, that we are... That, listen, we're participants in this deal. Okay? And listen, because of those things, we've got to understand that we are protected. God will not leave us, leave us high and dry. He really won't. I hope that you guys will reconsider next Sunday at 9.15 to join us. I really do. And if not, I hope that when you go home, you get your notebook out and you write down, Ooh, man, I can think of three people right now who I need to start praying for every day. And be a George Mueller. Don't stop. Don't stop. Listen, some people's, some people's internal soul relies on it. Bow your head with me, please. Father, thank you. Thank you for, uh, just thank you. Thank you for the, the great gift of prayer. Thank you for not telling us, well, Dallas, you asked me one time now. You don't need to ask anymore. Help us, Father. Help us to be persistent in the things that you lay on each of our hearts. Help us, Lord, to understand about how, uh, man, listening to you and being persistent. And it, Listen, our goal is to please you. Our goal is to please you in all the things that we do. Father, help us to realize the power that you have given us, just not by the Holy Spirit, but the power we have through prayer. You have given us a wonderful, mighty gift that uh, history has shown us that has changed hearts and minds of nations and countries. It has changed the hearts and minds of our, of our parents and grandparents and children and great-grandchildren. Your word, Father, when we get on our knees humbly and asking for you to intervene is, is where the greatest power is. Help us, Father, to be people that before the battle, during the battle, and after the battle, we will find ourselves on our knees. Help us to understand, Lord, that, th that this year is not a spectator sport. That, that you want us all to be participants. We all have a role. We all have a duty, so to speak. Help us, Father, to, to understand that no matter what the world might say, what the, what the oceans are doing, what, what, what life may bring us, what seasons we're in or not in, that you will protect us. You will protect us from ourselves and you will protect us from the enemy. Help us to understand, Father, that prayer is how, is how you do it. <laughs> is how you do it. You love talking with your children. And there's nothing too great, Father, and there's nothing too small. Thank you for being a, a God like that. I thank you, Father, this morning for the men and women in my life who you had praying for me all those years. So I, too, one day was able to see so I could be up here today. So, Father, I love you. I love these people. Encourage them, bless them as they go, and spread your love and your goodness throughout this week. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.